How you doing folks? I'm Gary and this is The Cult of Drummer. Welcome back to another wee episode here on the channel folks. It's been a couple of weeks since I've uh, managed to pop on and uh, do a wee video for you folks. Um, I'd have some sort of, let's see, some personal issues going on and one of my uh, close relatives has been in hospital um, for an organ transplant so it's been a bit of a, a hectic time at the moment um, so I've not really had much chance to get and sit in front of the camera and to actually drink any of this stuff but operation's gone ahead and um, so now I've uh, got a wee chance to um, sort of get myself caught up again and um, tonight I uh, <laughs> Got another uh, blended uh, whiskey for you tonight, folks. And this one, a wee bit of a wee bit of darkness, um, is it's come from this, uh, the Flying Scotch Dram. Um, four bottles of grouse in this little thing. My um, brother-in-law um, is heading off out to Thailand um, next weekend um, for a, a few months, and I kind of, I suppose. Bit of a parting gift from him. He sent me this and said I have to review something from the box. So I'm going to grab one of these from here, get it in the glass, and we'll have a wee chat. Toot toot! Um, okay, let's see. Now, these are all um, balls of grouse, and I have covered. There's four in here and I've covered two of them previously. So let's get this open and see what we've got. Ooh. Destroying the train here, I feel like, uh, yeah. Right, so we have got, they, they, they really didn't want these to come out to be honest. So there is Ruby Cask, um, what a horrible noise. Um, the famous one. And what we've got here, we've got Smoky Black, I've done uh, the black before, so we'll put that one to the side at the moment. And I think this is just a bottle of Standard Grouse, Standard Grouse, so we'll put that one over there. Um, and famous one, we'll stick that one to the side, and what we're going to grab is Ruby Cask. Um, so we'll give this one a wee crack, get it in the... Uh, Maybe I should have taken some time before I came and did this. Huh? Right, let's get some of this in the glass. Uh, new shaped bottles rather than the last set of um, grouse miniature of a hat. Slightly shorter neck on them. So, yes. um, I've mentioned to you before, grouse, um, whilst it's not my favourite of whiskies, um, grouse has a following. Um, it's one of those whiskies, doesn't matter where you're going to go, you'll find it on night at the shelves in the store, in the supermarkets, wherever. Always seems to be grouse in there. Um, its following tends to be for the fact that it, it can be quite cheap. Um, you know, you can pick up sort of a litre bottle for 20 odd quid, uh, you know, um, and it makes it that accessible side of whiskies. Um, but in the same time, the name of the brand um, makes it quite a popular brand as well. You know, over the years they've been involved with advertising within sports organisations and things like that. Um, and the Macala in, well there you go, Grouse in itself contains, it's said to contain a number of um, decent whiskies. Um, let's see what it says on the bottle of these ones here, just so, just, I haven't really looked at these new bottles. Um, these shorter ones, I'm not really seeing what it says on it. These ones seem to have been, they've got Sweden marked on them. Um, so they must have been for some sort of uh, overseas marker. What's this one say? Um, Edrington, Sweden. Um, so yeah, they, they must have been an overseas sort of thing. So, as I say, I mentioned the word Edmonton there. Um, Grouse comes from the Edmonton group, um, and it's Edmonton have McAllen and they have Highland Park and things like that. So, what's in these bottles here? Apparently, is a sort of industry secret, 
but we know that it's probably going to be um, little bits of those sort of things in it. Um, this one that I've poured, Ruby Cask, 40% um, and it has been, they say it's been rested in port casks. Um, resting period, no idea. You know, essentially it is, um, it's famous grouse that's been produced. It's then been put into um, port influenced casks and given what they call a resting period in there. You know, we talk about finishing periods and things like that. So I think a resting period is maybe a sort of a poetic way of saying it's a short finish um, in that casks. And whether the port has influenced it or not, I have no idea because as much as I've drank grouse and things before, I've never actually tried this ruby cask one um, in any shape, way, size or way. So let's see if there's any influence from the port. It's not a bad nose. Okay, it's nothing starting, it's nothing amazing, but it's not a bad nose. But you know what I'm going to do? We're going to jump up here and run off out of camera and grab another glass. And I'm going to crack open the standard one and just see kind of difference on the nose here of that resting period. I'm going to keep saying that resting period has uh, done anything. There is an ever so slight, um, and it's ever so slight. I want to say fruitiness, but it's not. There's, there's just something sweeter, maybe on the nose, um, on the uh, port one, where they call it ruby, as opposed to your standard grouse. Um, let's. I know what the grouse is like, so let's, yeah, take a wee sip. There's that same, um, slightly roughness about that, but I yeah, am getting a slight fruitiness about it. Um, yeah. Interesting. I'm going to take a wee sip of the uh, bog standard uh, grouse. There's a difference. There is. There's almost a, um, a nicer mouthfeel on that ruby one. Um, but I would say that your standard grouse felt slightly more easier on the finish. Not as... Grouse to me always has a bit of a rough finish. But when I went between the two of these there, your standard grouse was probably slightly softer on the finish as opposed to the ruby. The ruby was nicer in the mouthfeel and probably nicer on the nose. But your standard went down, down slightly better. Yeah, there's a creamier, heavier mouthfeel on the port one. Um, I think I read somewhere, uh, you know, I'm not really sure. In fact, I'm not even going to say it because I'm not sure. I'd like to find out what the port was used in there or whatever it was. Um, the, the label is really quite, you know, it's printed that miniature way, so you can't always necessarily make out what it says. Um, it just says port cask finish. It, you know, there's no mention of what the port is, and um, I think a lot of these times when they use casks that come in, it have had other influences in it. They don't always necessarily uh, like to say what the port is, and I think in a lot of places they have the old NDAs, non disclosure agreements, where they don't necessarily say 
where the cast had come from. But saying that, you know what? For a slight difference, um, whereas I'm not a fan of Grouse, I've always said I'm not a fan of Grouse, I've said it several times in several different um, 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 reviews that I'm not a fan of Grouse. Do you know what? I could easily give that to other people to drink and be happy with what they're drinking. It's, uh, it's not overly bad um, for a grouse. Um, so, yeah, um, the famous grouse, ruby cask, yeah, pleasantly surprised, yeah. And I think looking online, a full size, whatever bottle is, in the region of £23 or something silly like that. So even if I did buy it, which I probably wouldn't. Um, it's not a bad We blended, poor-influenced dram. Slash, folks. <laughs>